Hi, I'm Jing Ji from Stony Brook University. The title of my presentation is Syntax Prosody Interface in Perception of Right Dislocation in Mandarin. Right dislocation is very common in colloquial Mandarin, which refers to the grammatical phenomenon in which a sentence process is a component standing to the right of what we normally take to be sentence final boundary. Unlike English and other Western languages, which require right dislocated and efforts co-referential with main clause reference, RD in Mandarin occurs with a wide variety of word categories and constructions. While there are disagreements regarding the syntactic process of RD in Mandarin, such as the base generation account, rightward movement account, and leftward movement account, the intonation of RD is cross-linguistically observed to involve pitch compression, such as the reduction in pitch register or pitch range, as well as the reduction in duration. However, there's one thing that Mandarin seems to deviate from the cross-linguistic pattern. Although RD involves pause in other languages, Zhou and Lu claimed that Chinese RD doesn't involve pause, and Guo's experiment supports this claim. However, the conclusion of intonation of RD in Mandarin suffers from two issues. First, it was deduced from general RD sentences. RD realizing different pragmatic functions might result in intonation variation. For instance, a pitch prominence could appear on an effectic RD phrase. And a pause can occur before an afterthought RD phrase. Second, from an economic point of view, there might be redundant information. Since RD is associated with various linguistic signals, the relative significance might be reflected by different syntactic categories. For example, in the first sentence, the right dislocated part is a nominal phrase, while in the second sentence, the right dislocated part is a non-nominal phrase. In this study, we conducted a perceptual experiment to explore the role of pause and pitch prominence in the perception of NP and non-PRD sentences. Based on the theoretical analysis and empirical observations, two hypotheses were proposed. First, following the cross-linguistic observation, there is no significant difference in perception of RD sentences with and without pause in general. Second, there is a significant difference in perception between NP and non-PRD sentences in terms of pH prominence. Since there are two factors patterned together in natural speech, we detached them and created synthesized the stimuli to assess their relative contribution. As is shown in the table, condition A, no pause, no prominence is supposed to indicate the default prosody of our sentences, while B, C, and D are manipulated conditions. Hypothesis 1 predicts that, in general, there, there is no difference between condition A, C, and B, D, whereas hypothesis 2 predicts that the difference between A, B, and C, D is significant for NP, but not non NP RD sentences. Eight target RD sentences, four with MPs, four with non MPs, and eight sentences in normal order were recorded at normal speech rate by a native manual speaker with a sampling frequency of 44,100 hertz. All the target RD sentences have the main clause ending with the, a discourse particle for confirmation. Since the can also serve as a complementizer of a relative clause, RD sentences have an alternative rating as a relative clause when the RD part is prominent. Therefore, the target RD sentences were recorded in two ways, either with prominence or with no prominence on the RD element. Sentences in normal order were taken as both filler and anchor stimuli. To control the effect of duration, all the recorded sentences were normalized in duration with Pratt. 
the recording of target sentences with prominence on the right dislocated part was taken as a stimuli of condition C. Stimuli of condition A was synthesized from those of condition C by manipulating pitch contour to mimic pitch compression of the corresponding sentences in RD reading. Examples of pitch manipulation as shown in the two figures. Stimuli of conditions B and D were generated from those of conditions A and C by inserting silence of 300 milliseconds between two parts of a sentence. 44 adult native Mandarin speakers in their 20s were recruited through social networking services to participate in the experiment. Before the experiment, 32 stimuli were created through manipulation and divided into four sets. The stimuli in each set were counterbalanced by lighting square so that each participant was presented with one of the conditions of each sentence. Within each set, eight target sentences were arranged in a pseudo-random order and intermingled with the equivalent number of filler stimuli. The experiment was delivered through Qualtrix. During the experiment, each participant was randomly but evenly assigned to one of the four sets of stimuli. Each stimulus was presented in a given dialogue context. Participants were asked to raise the question in the dialogue, listen to the recorded answer, and make judgments on the appropriateness of the answer by choosing from a five-point EAI scale ranging from one to five. The figure illustrates the mean value of acceptance of NP and non-PRD sentences in four conditions. It can be seen that the mean values of all the conditions were above three, showing that for native manual speakers, there exists a wide range of tolerance of RD sentences in terms of variation in prominence and pause. Among four conditions, sentences in condition A, no pause, no prominence, with default intonation were most acceptable. Various sentences in condition D, prominence, pause, were least acceptable. Within each condition, the mean value of the non-P group was higher than the NP group. An independent sample t-test indicated that scores on acceptability were significantly higher for filler sentences than for NP sentences of condition A whereas scores were not significantly higher for filler sentences than for non-MP sentences of condition A. The results indicated that non-MP RD sentences with a default intonation were considered to be natural by native speakers. This table summarizes the results of the linear model on the acceptability of RD sentences. It turns out that there was a significant difference between NP and non-NP group. non prd sentences were more acceptable than np sentences. The effect of two factors shows that although there was a significant perceptual difference between sentences with and without pitch prominence, the difference between sentences with and without pause was not significant, which indicates that compared with pause, Pitch prominence is a more significant signal in the perception of RD. To compare the role of two factors in the NP and non-P group, a linear model was applied to data in two groups separately. The results are presented in the two tables. In terms of pulse, there was no significant effect of pulse on the perception of either NP or non-NP sentences. In contrast, the effect of pitch prominence differed between NP and non-P sentences, while pitch prominence was not a significant factor in the perception of non-NP sentences, it has a significant effect on the perception of NP sentences. In general, the high acceptability of RD sentences reflects the flexible word order of colloquial Mandarin. The insignificant effect of pause contradicts the conclusion of production experiments of Guo that pause is not allowed between RD sentences. Results from this study confirm cross-linguistic observation, showing that pausing between does not significantly affect the acceptability of RD sentences. 
two possible explanations could account for this phenomenon. On one hand, native Mandarin speakers might not be sensitive to pulse before the right dislocated part, as a reversed upward order could indicate the separation of two parts regardless of the pulse. On the other hand, from the view of the economy, as there are other signals with significant effects, a pulse is not an essential factor during perception. Our experiment also shows that pitch prominence has a significant effect on the perception of NP sentences, while for non-P sentences, whether there is pitch prominence or not does not exert significant impact. The difference might be attributed to the information structure of NPs and non-NPs. In the stimuli, right dislocated NPs serve as a subject of a sentence representing arguments of the event, such as agent, objects, location, time, which are supposed to be common ground and can be inferred from the main clause. By contrast, right dislocated non-NPs are modifiers of the main clause, which conveys the manner, frequency, possibility of the action. Since there are additional information that is not predictable from the main clause, they're more likely to be prominent when indicating emphatic function. In conclusion, this study investigated the role of pitch prominence and pause in the perception of NP and non-PRD sentences. In contrast with the impression of pause in Mandarin right dislocation, the experiment results suggest that pause is acceptable in right dislocated sentences since inserting a pause before the right dislocated part does not significantly impact acceptability. Additionally, there is an interaction between syntactic structure and prosodic properties. Non-NP right dislocated sentences are more acceptable than NP counterparts, while pitch compression serves as a significant signal in the perception of, right, of NP right dislocated sentences. It does not significantly affect the perception of sentences with non-NPs. That's all about, all about it. Thank you very much.